All right, so today I'm going to draw Spider-Man just for fun. So let's get our blue ready. Actually, I'm not going to draw all of Spider-Man. I'm just going to draw spider like a, a bust, a spidey head. And um, I'm going to try, as always, I'm always going to try something new when I'm starting a new drawing. I'm going to do a more, more of a, like a skin tight sort of mask. A mask that um, sort of vacuum forms to the face, but not in hopefully not, in a sort of grotesque way. Sometimes you see, like some artists when Spidey's yelling or, or um, you know, screaming out in pain or emotional anguish, they, you can see his lips through the mask, which I don't, I always find disconcerting. So I'm not gonna go that far. But I am going to try and see the like the the eye cavity is a bit more pronounced, that sort of thing. I've got my mic right in front of the, the drawing tablet and it's it might be picking up some of the pen strokes and it is rather in the way, so I might shift that around during the recording. So what I'm going to start, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm starting off sort of penciling in the general shapes of Peter Parker's face. And um, it'll give me a scaffold in order to put that mask on him. That's how I always do it. I always draw more than I need, which... You know, always uh, makes the drawing time longer, so I'm not sure if I recommend it as a, a drawing, drawing technique, but it's definitely a safer method. He's not looking quite right, is he? Safer in the way that uh, you're not going to, by taking shortcuts, you'll um, ham up a particularly fundamental shape or something like that. So if you draw in the, the bones or the muscles for, for um, details that are otherwise hidden under um, uh, clothing or shadows, you still, it informs the stuff that you can see. That's what I mean by it's safer. To draw the things that you ultimately won't see. Now this part here, it's too short, isn't it? Like to, to my eye, it looks kind of fine on paper, but if you saw someone with a real head shape like that, you go, whoa, back of that head, back of that guy's head is missing. He's got some sort of pinhead syndrome. That's a bit better. All right, so let's put it, let's put a bit more in with the, the neck. Now Spidey's not an overly muscular dude. He is very muscular for the average Joe, but you know, he's no Hulk, let's put it that way. So this trapezius here, I'm not gonna put too much in there. Like if it was a Hulk, he's like, whoa, you know, whoa. like no, no, we're not doing that. Just a bit.
All right. Because, you know, like the mask, the mask is, um, when you think about it, uh, it's probably the most realistic part of Spider-Man's costume in that it doesn't show a lot of facial features, as you'd expect with a real mask. You put a stock in your head, you're not going to see well, the eyelids and the mouth and all the rest of it. But then you, if you apply that, that same realism to the rest of his body, like how, like um, how can you see this man's like abdominal muscles that, but you know, as we always see they're like, they're always finely cut into the suit, which is just not realistic. So if we're going to, um, like even the veins here, like are sometimes visible in, in the suit, which is just not right. It's like, he's, it's not body paint. It's a, it's a spandex suit. So we're going to take the middle road. We're going to see a little bit of his facial features, but um, not as many as he would. All right, so that's fine. I guess. Just get the mic out of the way a bit more. It's really in the way. Just put it off to the left a bit. All right, let's go. Let's lighten that up. Put the real layer over the top. And maybe I'll give this, I've been experimenting with the full paint style of illustration in that there's no line work, which is sort of sacrilege when it comes to my own personal style. I've always aimed for is always aim to have like succinct minimalistic line work it's always harder to um, to make a few lines tell the whole story so I sort of held that standard up to myself to use as few lines as possible and but still be lines you know, if you get my drift not actual paint work because painting is even more than a thousand lines it's it's got the gradient, again, if you catch my drift. The, the tonal, um, you know, from black to, to white, there's all the grays in between, whereas our traditional comic work, it's just black and just white lines. Line work art, why not? So I might actually go to the dark side and do a full digital paint on this. We'll see. Can I get these lines to match up? There we go. Crease to the suit, back of the head. It was funny, I thought it was a little funny at least. Spidey put on his mask, all the hair, it was like he had no hair at all. It's like a skull cap. I was like, that's a really tight mask. Even like, uh, especially in the, in the late 80s, I think it was late 80s, when um, they were sporting the mullets, the Ben Reilly era. I don't remember Ben really had a mullet and it just whoop, all went away when you put on that mask. So I'm just picking out those protruding points of the face, drawing in some contour lines to inform the, um, the painting process or the shading at least.
Not sure if I'll put him in sort of a mean look. He's, he's spidey after all. Should sort of soften up this brow a bit. Spidey's, you know, his default setting, even though he's gone through a lot of rage and, and anguish, you know, like his default emotion is the Joker. Not the Batman Joker, but the, the Kidder. The, um, the class clown. Okay. Very creepy looking Spider Man currently. But hopefully it'll all come together. in here, with the collarbone. Really should look at some reference for the neck, because in this area here, there is a you know, there's there's another tendon that comes down here, I think, and sort of another one there. But then there's this vein. If I'm going to put va look, I'm not going to put the veins in. That's something that I just said to myself I wasn't going to do. But there's sort of a loop in here, looping vein. Let's not go to that level. Neck is a bit longer than he should be, but you know what? That is kind of a, a spidey trademark as well. So let's keep it in there. Elongated neck. Okay. All right. Let's start doing some color. important step. I'll go over a separate layer. Let's put on his eyes, the um, the mask eyes, the big bug eyes. They're not exactly spider eyes, are they? Because they're... I was just about to do the, the old... that guy, but um, this is classic Spider-Man. It's doesn't have doesn't have this thing at the, at the apex. I actually might. I was going to do the big one, but I think I'm going to go with the small one. You know, this guy here. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to go with that one. I haven't drawn Spider-Man for so long that I automatically was going to go for the Spider-Man that I drew as a as an eight-year-old boy. I never liked this small one when I was a kid, but like broccoli, you change your mind about some things as you get older. Tastes change. Cool. All right. Color time. Well, Spidey's red. Let's start with that. Let's pick a 
a mid-tone red and go with that. So I'm going to put this under this sketch. Start with a big brush. Bigish. Zoom in a little. Gonna go around the perimeter. The most boring part of colouring. Doing the flats, as they're sometimes called. This uh, stage here, I'm always a bit thrown by the, the the line work and that I get like oh, yeah, I only need to you know get somewhere in here and I'll be fine but often when you you get rid of the line work you're left you know you are left with this ultimately and you're like oh wait that's not as smooth as I thought it was because you I wasn't as um, pedantic of getting those smooth lines Particular part's not red, but that's okay. Sort that out as we go. Alright, I think I've closed the loop there. Get the old bucket. One more for good measure. Okay, now I can just go through. And I'm going to just hide that for a second. Doesn't look smooth enough. Yeah, fine. So I'm going to start going through with the, the highlights. So I'm going to pick a slightly more orange and more saturated, more white filled color. It's a bit too orange. Turn it back a bit and using uh, a opaque watercolor brush select the outline so I don't go out of the lines come in here this is where I'm going to put the the lights going to be coming in um, from here okay So if you just run over the area, you're just eventually going to blend it. So that's not what I want to do. I'm going to push quite hard to get this full true tone and then smear it out a bit. Okay. Now this is just a general, actually I should be a little bit more general, so a much bigger brush. Just a general um, tone because I'm going to come in later and um, with the webbing, I'm going to give it a, a, a more pronounced sort of uh, bump in between all the webbing. So the, bump, the webbing itself will have a texture. It's a bit too much there. Okay. Now. 
Just rough. Rough it out. Try and see. Yeah, I think that's working. Now I'm just using um, in Clip Studio uh, under the uh, brushes. There's a watercolor um, category, and I'm using the, the first one, the opaque watercolor drawing it right over the same layer which is using the the context of like a real um, uh, water paint brush uses the the, the the paint that's already there and sort of mixes it in so you have to you know, the harder you push the more true it, the color comes out from the color that you've selected the lighter the more it just sort of smears around the paint that's already there See, I did this, so I watch, I do that. That's because I actually started the brush on um, the white and it smeared it in. I wish it didn't do that because there's no white on this layer, but it's reading it from the layer below. So I'm sure there's a setting somewhere that stops that, but uh, get around it, I just target on the, the red and work from there. All the brush time. Okay, that's good as a, a base. So let's do those webs that I was speaking of before. So I could probably get rid of the, these lines. Keep that mask. Heck, let's just put the mask on now. I'm going to put it on a new layer. Uh, almost true black with that, with a bit of a blue tinge, sort of like a midnight sort of reflection. I'm going to use the, the G pen to get a highly defined shape. That's what I drew the first initial sketch in with the G pen. Smaller brush, 50. 50 for this particular canvas. Oops, just auto saving. I'm going to put it over the top of this drawing. There we go. This is too much of an influence. Let's bring it right down. That's better. Now, I think that this point is a bit too far in, so I should probably take it here. 
make it sort of in that that eye socket area not on the bridge of the nose I'm going to have to turn the canvas so I'm currently using uh, an XP pen I think it's a 22E um, and it doesn't have any touch ability this is the drawing display I'm using uh, I was used to using the Wacom companion previously and it had the touch enabled which was a double-edged sword it meant that you could easily rotate and pinch and zoom and stuff like that by just using the the gestures touch gestures that you normally would use on your um, phone or something like that but the double edge the catch-22 that I'm talking about is that uh, you'd accidentally put all these spots everywhere because of your the palm of your hand would sort of read as a, a pen tip sometimes so with the my current uh, display tablet it's the XP XP pen 22e as I said it has no touch sensitivity uh, which gets rid of those accidental um, sort of marks that you leave everywhere but you miss out on the the very intuitive you know turning the canvas around just as you would a piece of paper you just you know use your palm and or your you know two fingers and turn the canvas so to get around it I've uh, purchased a, a separate peripheral it's the shuttle express and it's a just look it up online it's got a dial which is the main thing to give you it so I've got a dial I can turn around the whole thing it's all programmable with macro keys it's got two dials uh, like one that I use for zoom zoom in zoom out and the other one for turning the canvas and then it's got one two three four five programmable buttons um, I use one for grab and uh, undo and redo and uh, eraser and pen which is very handy so I recommend um, to people that don't have a touch display to pick up the Shuttle Express to give it that functionality sort of a workaround even for people who do have a touch display I probably recommend it so you can turn off the touch ability of the display to get rid of those unwanted stray marks but still keep the intuitive advantages of a touch display by relegating that to the Shuttle Express it's also handy if you're doing video work and you want to scrub through the the timeline a bit you can um, set a profile there with your your favorite video editor and use one of the dials to scrub through the timeline it's handy lots of people you know spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a special keyboard that does have a dial just for that functionality so you know no need grab the shuttle express or something one of its competitors at the time it was the best one for the money when I bought it okay so there's some pretty slick eyes except for down here it's not quite right here we go it's a bit better all right so I'm gonna make another layer and underneath it just scroll in the white lenses just do the outline some people use the marquee tool um, I don't I use the brush to mark out places I want to fill just find it better
Okay, it's looking a bit more like Spidey, doesn't it? So, let's put a bit of shine on these. Actually, these lenses are too white, so I'm going to bring it down to a grey. So I've got some room to move with highlights and stuff like that. Can't get any, can't get any brighter than white. So I've got no room, if you catch my drift. Mm, a bit too grey. And should probably steer away from pure monochromatic. So what kind of hue should I put in there? Maybe a, bl a blue. Um, I haven't tried a pink. Look, cause, well, what you really have to consider is if we've got we've got this light coming in from the. Here, let me just get a, a pen to draw with. Okay, so we've got the light. Got the light coming in from here. This is sort of a sunlight. Okay, so I've I've chosen a, an orange a orange yellow sort of a color. Even though sunlight is white, this is this is art. We're giving the impression of things. So it's coming in from there. Uh, now from this side, we've got no, almost no light at all, but it's it's an artificial light, a re, a, like a bounce light coming in there, and I chose a more purple color. So in you know, sort of this part here, we should <laughs> looks funny like his eyes. We should be getting some of this bounce light in here, so we should be getting that purple coming in here, um, and then from here we should be getting that orange from the sun just on the this area here. But I want to maybe get like a, a general hue from a, an, an artificial source. Um, so like, you know, this purple is like, he's probably standing next to a purple car, so it's reflecting off. But um, maybe we can have like a cool sort of pink coming in from this direction. It's generally sort of given a bit of a up light to him. It's, you know, it's, it just gives an extra dimension to it all. So I'm going to hide that layer. What do we got in this layer? There we go. Yep. So let's, let's give it a, just a, a general pinkish, very light pinkish color in the lenses. Uh, where's my fill? There we are. A bit too pink. Let's bring it down a bit. It's going to be very subtle. There we go. Okay, let's give it some highlights. So, as I said before, orange for the, the sunlight. It's so, weird, like it's, we're splitting hairs because it's gonna be so close to white because it is a highlight on a very light surface, a glassy surface too. So it's gonna be quite specular, specular meaning it's hard light. So um, I will start with, um, the watercolor brush, but I will be doing most of the work with the G pen to give it that specularity. So this is the watercolor, pretty big brush. Okay, and don't really expect any being here, but I'll just put a touch because it's on the other side of his head. Okay, now for that purple. Coming in from this angle. Okay. Ah, heck, so it's so they're all, the purple and the, the pink are so close. I might put a bit. I might put a bit of a blue for an underlight. So that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Now, pure white for a specular. Go back to the G pen. See if it shows up. Okay, see that? Hard light. Let's, let's zoom in there a bit. There we go.
Hmm. I've got... So this... I think this should be more buggy over here. Should have more of that going on. So I'm actually going to change the lens shape there. So that's this layer. Get that color. These curves are hard to do. Wouldn't want to be a, a traditional artist with these imperfect techniques of mine. Yeah, cool. Real cool. I don't see so myself. All right. Um Let's do the webbing. Oh wait, I'm on this this black part here, I've got to put um, my shine because it is a shiny black surface, and I'm going to use that blue, very light blue, and with my trusty old watercolor. Hmm. See that? See what I did there? It actually made it a little transparent, so you can see the the white underneath. So what I'm going to do <coughs> is duplicate duplicate this layer. It'll give us a nice backing for it, under layer sort of thing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Now it's time for the wedding webbing. Grab that color, trusty G pen, smallish. Now it's on its own layer, so we're not gonna hurt anything. Away we go. get a picture of Spider-Man to have a bit of reference for the webbing because I'm not sure if the the, um, the webbing starts off in the middle or if it goes out to the sides and of course it's up to the artist but still there's probably a convention there let's have a look <coughs> school spidey yeah who was the original spider-man artist was it um who was it should know this. I'm just not that kind of fan that remembers all the names. I'm not that type of person that remembers all the names. It's someone senior, maybe not. Not um, don't remember the names. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Ramita Senior is who I was thinking of before, but he's not the original. Okay, so it is definitely um, off to the side, but in the middle for the forehead. So let's go. Mm. 
Looking good, looking good. Yeah, could go crazy if we put them like lines in like that, but it looks like an actual corduroy sock head. So we've got to sort of stick to that sort of uh, density of web work. And I'm probably going to make them, hmm, I was going to say I was probably going to make them a bit thicker, but I'm not so sure. I'm kind of digging this thin webbing. But remember it's sort of originating from here. So um, I could actually, to be honest, draw, I do like this line here, but let's take it from the origin. True origin. Yeah, sort of, there we go. Cause I can always delete this part out later. Join up, damn you. How does it work? I think it sort of goes down like this. Let's have a look at the reference. <laughs> I'm already seeing a, um, a trend in the references where people are kind of expertly avoiding showing the side of his head because it's a problematic area of the webbing. Okay, I think I was right the first time. Like that. I don't want to show this ear bump. Too low density. Hmm, it's not quite flying the way I want to, but I'm finding it difficult. Let's look at the real world Sam Raimi movie, because that's it. Um, for some things that are drawn, um, we cheat, but with movies, it's real. So you, you have to, it has to work in the real world. So let's have a look. Yeah, it's got that funny, Looking web work on the side of the head because it was an actual problem. Sorry to speak about things that are off screen, but I'm not going to go to the trouble of showing it on screen. I'm trying to keep this as low key and easy going as possible for me. When and if I keep on making more of these videos. I'll um, practice showing off-screen elements. Okay, so 
Hmm. They definitely handled it different in the movie. I'm going to try and strike a balance. I might be... Um, might be annoying you so much with the mention of off-screen things that you're maybe even searching it up yourself and just to see what the heck I'm talking about. You're welcome. I'm okay with that, even though it's making me a bit frowny looking, which is not what I wanted to go for. Happy accidents, huh? Okay. So there's obviously more webs from the neck. I'm not sure how that works with the mask, but it kind of has to be. So it spreads it over the chest. It's been like a seam line where the shadow of the jaw sort of conceals the jump in web density. Don't know how. I'll have to actually have a bit of a closer look. Mm. Now yeah, this feels like that. Uh, color picked a different thing. Feels like there should be one in there, maybe, but not quite. Maybe this line needs to be moved. Yeah, let's give that a try. I also use the express keys on the side of my 22E XP pen. There are some people that don't like, or just um, you know, just don't use the express keys, and that's fine. Whatever works for you, but I, I do really like them. I'd be very upset if they were to get rid of them on future releases. I don't use the, the right hand express keys for anything because I'm right handed and I'm holding a, a pen in my right hand, but um, it does make it great for ambidexterity. People that are left handed, they can still, without flipping their device, get all the express, express keys. And like, you know, if I were like, you know, to set up more keys in the right that aren't as, you know, um, often use I can I can do that just reach over and use my thumb to, to press them but 
I just currently don't have it set up that way and it's working out okay. So that, that looks kind of okay, the webbing. Don't know about this area here, especially this part that doesn't look good when I zoom out. So I'm going to clean that up. bit like that, but a bit smoother. Hmm, yeah, that's getting there. This line's a bit too thick. Maybe I need to thicken all of them up now. He's too thick. select the lens, select my line layer, L line layer, webbing layer, delete, job done. Okay, same deal with these lines that are going off the edge, just select that base, come on, and line. invert selection, delete, cleaned up. Okay, it's getting closer to looking like Spidey. You could just go job done, but I'm gonna put a bit more in. Oh, well, here, I've forgotten about the actual, these bits of the webbing, haven't I? Duh. I'm gonna put a new layer so I don't destroy those ones. Yeah, about there. It's easier to turn it up, upside down. I found this when I was a kid. Doing the webbing. But it's harder to keep track of how it actually should be. Just easier on the strokes. I have to keep on looking up at my preview window to see if I'm getting it right. That's more, that's more on it. So I've got, I'm running a separate monitor to explain what's going on. I've got a separate monitor that um, that I'm looking at for my reference that I was talking about earlier, um, but also it shows me a, um, a thumbnail image, a very large thumbnail image because it's a 32 inch monitor um, of the entire canvas in the right orientation. So that's what I mean when I'm looking at my preview to keep track of how it actually looks like. It's a nice system. I like it. I recommend it. So by keeping this on the separate layer, it's, it makes it easier to, to make these changes, come in and, and delete part of it without actually deleting the, the vertical lines.
Turn the can this is what I mean. Turn the canvas around. It's not natural for my hand to do curves that way. It's more natural like this. But your your mileage may vary. Very, very rarely I've seen people draw the webs the other way, like like this. Um, you know, each to their own, but they're wrong. <laughs> this is the better way, I think. I know as a kid, I was, um, and this actually would probably come straighter just for the, the curvature of his head. Um, maybe even like that. Yeah, that actually looks more natural. Um, I was tempted to do it this way. It just seemed more right intuitively, but you know, looking at the comics, I was like, oh, no, wait. It's the other way. Not really pleased with how this is going around his jawline. It is accentuating it, but same time it's sort of funking it up. It's what some people call a tangent, tangent line to be avoided. Tangent lines. Should I space them closer together here and then space them out further here? Or should I just, just space them from the get go? Yeah. Getting a bit lazy. Clean this up. It's going over this bump of his neck. sort of will mess that up. Okay. Mike's getting in the way again. Gonna move the whole picture. Like I say, if I do more of these, 
Not sure if I will. Oh, get a better setup. A bit more comfortable. Speaking of Sam Raimi's uh, Spider-Man movie, uh, you know, definitely uh, the rose-tinted glasses are a factor in that I'm, uh, you know, they're of my generation, um, so that's why I do like them more, but I like to think also objectively, um, there's no objectivity in, in this subjective conversation, but um, I think on merit, they're better than the the Disney Spider-Man movies. They're about more things. They're actually about something. You know, they have actual themes, which is kind of a missing element. Not kind of, definitely missing element of all the Disney superhero movies, which is a shame. That's what it is, it's a shame. Because I want new Spider movies. I want to enjoy new Spider movies. And the elephant in the room is, well, well, what about the Amazing Spider-Man movies by the, you know, the rebooted Amazing Spider movies? You know what? They're fine. Uh, they're not as good as the Sam Raimi trilogy by no means. And, and I say trilogy for Sam Raimi, obviously including the third movie, which was the definitely the weakest player um, in the trilogy. Uh, but... So the, the Amazing Spider-Man ones, um, they had their merits. There's only two of them. Probably the first one, I'd say, is the only one that's worth watching. And um, Garfield, he, he's definitely a, a um, he's a good actor. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he's not a bad actor, I just thought he was a bad fit for Spider-Man. Well, he was a great fit for Spider-Man, but a very poor match for Peter Parker. He's just too cool. Spider-Man is a, he's a geek, he's a nerd, beat up at school, that type of guy. Very nerdy, science geek, and it was, and you go, well, you know, well, he's Spider-Man, how can he be these two things well spider-man when he put on the mask he he could um he used that secret identity as a way to express himself he came out of his shell he could the anonymity gave him the license to be the jokester the prankster funny guy Dealing out sick burns as he clobbered the bad dudes. <clears throat> okay, so this line clearly needs moving. Or does it? my anti-slip glove on, Just gripping up on the screen. Anyone, like if you ever buy a, um, a drawing tablet, inevitably they give you a free um, drawing glove. Almost all, actually the, the Wacom one I had to buy separately. But if you buy a Huey on or, the, or an XP pen, they'll give you like two free gloves. And they're they're a strange looking thing. They they only typically only have um, the uh, it wraps around the wrist and the in the heel of the palm. 
uh, and around the pinky and the ring finger, but the rest of the fingers and the, rest and the thumb are left fingerless, so to say. And so it gives you the, the highest, like it's the best of both, both worlds. You can grip the pen in a natural manner, but um, you can also get that sort of a glide with the white wearing the glove so you're not gripping up on the on the glossy screen because paper's not glossy well you know not drawing paper and if you were if you're using a, um, a touch screen like the Wacom ones um, the glove helps to desensitize your skin but as I said before not completely that's looking pretty cool it's coming along so again Let's delete those stray lines, select the base color, invert the selection, and delete. There we go. And what are these lines here? Yep. Let's get them out of the, the mask line as well. Oop. The um, goggle line. What do you call it? The eyepiece line. A different one. There we go. Okay, looking cool. Now this down here needs fixing up in the base color. That's too broad. Okie dokie. So, as I said, um, I was going to add a bit of depth to these. Let's see how that works. I'm going to duplicate this so I can go back to the old way. Non-destructive editing, as I like to call it. Now, uh, let's... It's a purple... It's, I'm going to use the trick. This is what I should have done before. So I'm going to choose um, let's make a new layer this can be the, the palette so this is the shadow color for the red Put a bit more purple in there okay and this is sun color I'm going to put him where he should be there and uh, let's see that blue for the mask Actually, I'm going to draw it okay the eyepiece and I have to sort of remember it was this color this that was the sun sort of shine on the eyepiece that was it and we've got this And I wanted to put in that. That was the blue for the shine on the eyepiece, the black rim of the eyepiece. About that. And that was that's the kind of blue. I'll do a deeper shade the blue for this 
just bounce under like the like the, the wet night tar of the road sort of thing. That's what's bouncing up. Can get him under that chin. Okay, so I may as well put that in now actually, very broadly. It really isn't um, skin tight as I first wanted to start it off. Oh well. Get a smaller brush. could be it. It does look pretty good. So I'm going to grab this highlight and small brush. Out better than I expected. So this is the um, the bump, uh, like these are sort of, if these red parts, the negative space in between the, it's kind of like a, an inverse of the Sam Raimi uh, suit design. So the Sam Raimi director um, suit design of uh, Spider-Man had the webbing as a actual 3D web that went over the um, the, black, the red of the, of the suit. Uh, whereas in this design that I'm doing here, uh, the the webbing is like the the um, it's indented, and the red part is like it's like a quilt. It's bumping out. Pretty sure it's been done before. Don't think I'm 
recreating the wheel here. done putting all these yellow highlights in I'll go around and do this side with um, uh, that deep maroon color and maybe for the the bottom color don't want to put too much in that shadow um, put that asphalt blue in there asphalt that's very Americanized of me asphalt um, ta but when you draw in spidey it feels good to put that on an Americanism or two New York you know that's what spiders about living in Queens and swinging through the New York Concrete jungle. Not a huge, you know, American fan, but definitely that part of their uh, popular culture that, you know, like, because of, of TV shows like um, that I've loved, like Seinfeld and Spider Man uh, comics and. I don't know, mainly Seinfeld really, and Spider-Man, gave me a sense of uh, the, the good romanticism sort of uh, flavour of New York. Get in the shadow. I should, should make a smaller brush for that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Missing a bit of the web there. You 
this is why this is why I think colorists would definitely like spot where they or even you know inkers would um, the inker would definitely spot where the penciler had, had made an error They're like whoopsie Gonna have to sort of make this area clear the way it's got that delineated part going through there. A bit more shading. Hmm. So I suppose this color. disappear into that. I'd normally put a, a black in there, but because we're painting, I want to paint with colours. I'll just take the webbing put them duplicate them and merge them so they're all one thing and I'm going to get a trusty eraser out soft eraser brush Sly Devil. How's that look? What a bit too far. There. Maybe come back in. This webbing though, hard razor. If you go looking, you'll find errors. settle in in that part so let's just check over here how it looks yep so 
I'm pretty good. Hmm, it's a bit too bold. I don't know why. Too big a brush? Too small a brush, I should say. Gotta be careful not to come right up against the that orange colour. Otherwise it's just not realistic. I mean like in here. It wouldn't appear that way. It's good to have it here because it, it contrasts like, oh yeah, that is a dent. Auto save. The auto save feature of Clip Studio does break your flow momentarily, but it's more price to pay. If you happen to have a crash, system crash or something, saved your progress. Because you know how many times I've manually saved in the last hour or whatever it's been? Zero. Another trick I might do to make these look a bit more pillowy is um, come in with the highlight and with a really big, big brush and like right in the center there to give it, make it a bit more convex looking. Have I missed anything? Don't think so. Let's try that, that big pillow I was talking about. Or maybe an even lighter colour. Nothing working out there. 
sure we could probably figure it out, but no, that's looking pretty good. Is it done? That's the question. Hmm. I think it is. There you go. There's a, a quick Spidey painting. Easy peasy. Spider-Man doesn't have any facial features to really speak of. It's quick and easy. There we go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll do another one of these in the future. I've been Mike Lee. You've been great. See you next time.